Hey everybody, welcome to another exciting edition of Manga Geekdom. Today we're going to go over my manga collection. It's a yearly thing. I love to do it. I do want to point out very quickly, it probably hasn't changed a lot since 2023. I've been playing Tetris with these dang shelves trying to accommodate everything, but they either don't fit or I don't have room for it and I have books stored everywhere. There's just so many good releases out there that I can't not not get them. I have to get them. <laughs> uh, some uh, high profile releases for this year uh, that's even if I have to store it away, I do want to own it so I don't have to worry about it at a later point in time. So with that said, I do hope you enjoy this video. I'm going to go over all the series that are uh, collected and displayed here. Uh, just know that I just have these two Calyx shelves. You can only do from left to right around 18 volumes when it comes to regular sized manga, uh, fitting three rows basically of 18 books and you can store some stuff on, on top it's not the best looking collection out there i, I know there are better ones uh, to look at on on this platform but it's mine and uh i'm proud of it i like it it's a little chaotic but it fits with me and i do have plans of of moving stuff around but that requires a lot of time patience and a lot of money so whenever that happens i will take you along for the ride and film it because right now half of these shelves are filled with my Western comics. So the plan is for uh, me to expand and move those comics to another display, another shelf, and these two Calyx will be strictly all manga. Hopefully it happens next year. We will see what happens. But for now, the agenda today is to check out the collection and to see what's new, what's old, what's funky, what's embarrassing, all that fun stuff. So let's get started. All right, folks, let's get this started. The first manga here is just one singular volume of A Galaxy Next Door. By the time I got this volume and read it, really enjoyed it. The anime was right around the corner, and I've been meaning to go back and collect the entirety of the series, but I haven't done so, so there you go. We're off to a great start. Next to it is A Kingdom of Quartz from Bomhat. I think this is really underrated. The highlight here being the art looking absolutely phenomenal. Next to it is A Cat From Our World and The Forgotten Witch. I think this is a highly underrated series as well. Do recommend it if you like fantasy and of course if you like cat manga. Alpi, The Soul Sender. I have the first four volumes here, I believe out of seven total. This is a nice mix of Bishojo meets Magical Girl and of course dark fantasy aspects. I really do enjoy this series. And before I continue, I will probably be saying that a lot. So if you want to play a game of how many times I say I really enjoyed this, underrated or highly recommended, by all means take a shot. I think you'll be pretty amused by the end of the video. Continuing our journey here, the next series collected here is Battle Angel Alita. I have the first six volumes of part one. This is the revised translation, if you will, which was released as the box set and oversized hardcovers, but these are the smaller editions. And next to it, of course, I do have the sequel, Last Order, the first five Omnis, and then you have to collect the remainder of the series in single volumes. I'm still missing volume 17, unfortunately. That is hard to come by. If you know where I can get one, by all means, do let me know. I would appreciate it. I have not gotten the third and final Alita series, but I do plan to do that eventually. And all the way in the back of this first cube, we have one of my favorite series, Beastars. When it comes to anthropomorphic animals, I do think Beastars is one of the better ones out there. Highly recommend this series. The next cube has a bunch of cool stuff. You got some Bs and Cs. Here we have Bakemonogatari, or at least the first part of it, the first eight volumes. I know it's a long series, 22 of them, so I, I have to catch up on my reading. Next to it, one of my favorite manga, Call of the Night from Kotoyama. Kotoyama being one of my favorite modern mangaka. I love his art style. And here we have this postcard book, which was released with volume 20, which I have here, the Japanese edition of it. We are very close to finishing Call of the Night in English. Very excited about that. 
We got a random assortment of goodies. Black Lagoon being the highlight here. One of my favorite action manga. Black Canvas, my so-called artist journey. This is one of my favorite autobiographical manga, if that's a style. I really did enjoy this one. A very emotional read and fun slash heartbreaking at the same time. Uh, next to it, a new entry to the collection. Bless. I have the first two volumes here. This one surprised the heck out of me. The art is phenomenal, but the story and the characters are not what you would expect, or at least for me, I did not see a manga coming out where the topic was the makeup industry. That is really cool. We have the first two volumes of Bochi the Rock. I don't know if I actually want to commit to owning everything because I ended up enjoying the anime way more than the manga. I don't know if I'm the only one here who's saying that, but uh, it's nice to have at least some of Bochi in the original source material. Blood Blade, which is a pretty interesting release, comes out in English first. This is by Oma Say, and it's a lot of action-y, Helsing-type fun with vampires and monsters. What more can I say? On top of that, we got Box of Light, the first two volumes. I thought it was over, but apparently we got a third volume coming out soon. This one is super indie in its style, in its writing. Basically, a convenience store in limbo, on the border between life and death. Pretty interesting stuff. And one cat manga at the top, Breakfast with My Two-Tailed Cat. Next Cube has some interesting books. Dandadan is a recent entry into the collection. I wasn't going to collect it. I had volume one for the longest of times, but now here I am with two and three. I'm slowly reading through it. I'm looking forward to the anime and it's been great so far. So I'm enjoying my time with it a uh, bit by bit. Next to it is Dark Gathering. Now I did mention at the start of the video that I don't really collect Shonen Jump series because they are so long. This is the exception, I guess. And one other, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. But Dark Gathering is a fantastic horror manga. I love me some good spooky horror, and especially in manga format. And Dark Gathering does this pretty freaking well. I love the art. I really enjoy the anime, but I gotta go with the source material on this one. Next to it, speaking of horror, we got Die Dark from Q Hayashida, all seven volumes released so far. Love this series. So macabre, funny, satirical, and just chaotic in the best of ways. Towards the back, we got DRCL or Dracula Midnight Children, the first two hardcovers. Next to it, we got Don't Call It Mystery, the omnibus editions, two and ones. I hope more people pick this up. I have a suspicion that not a lot of people are buying this excellent slice of life mystery series. Highly recommend it. Don't Call It Mystery. And one of my favorite ongoing manga that I'm reading right now, Dinosaur Sanctuary. Cannot recommend it enough. It is phenomenal. If you like dinosaurs, you like slice of life manga, you'll be right at home with it. In the next cube, we got Freedan, all 10 volumes released so far. Next to it, we got Gokurakugai. Shonen Sunday stuff, well, that's a different animal than Shonen Jump. And Freedan just happens to be one of my favorites, so I'll let that slide. Gokurakugai, however, is really cool. I love the art on that. The story isn't too groundbreaking or revolutionary, but I love the sense of fashion and architecture and just the character designs in that series. Towards the back, we got all of Dr. Stone. I was so happy to collect this. This is actually one of my favorite Shonen Jump series. And behind it, you see Doro Hedoro from Q Hayashida. Fantastic series, though I do think it's a little bit too long. Still, it's phenomenal. I love the art and I love how crazy the characters are. And on top, we got some random dragons Dragon Quest Monsters Plus manga that I've yet to finish collecting. I think I still need like two more. I totally forgot about this one. Next to it, we got Gantz or Gantz Omnibus Editions, all 12 of these bad boys. And next to it, Handyman Saito in Another World. We got the first five volumes here. Love this one so much. I do recommend checking out the anime and then coming back to reading the source material. Go check it out. In the back, we got I Am A Hero. Unfortunately, I only have the first eight omnibus. By the time I was able to collect this series, nine through 11, I think, all sold out, out of print, and either super rare online or super expensive on stores. It is ridiculous. I hope 
hope Dark Horse is interested in maybe potentially putting this out in a bigger format. I would collect it that way or reprinting the missing volumes here. Who knows? One of the two. But please, Dark Horse, I would love to finish collecting I Am A Hero. We got one singular volume of Hell's Paradise. I saw this at Walmart of all places, picked it up, enjoyed it, and I forgot to keep going. That's a theme running throughout my manga collection. In the next queue, we got one of my ongoing favorite action series, Kemono Jihen. We got the first 12 volumes here. Love me this shonen battle action series with, of course, a lot of yokai elements. And speaking of yokai, Inspector, I got most of it. I'm missing the first six volumes because two of those six are extremely difficult to find. So I was frustrated and decided to not grab any of the first six volumes until they reprint the missing ones. I think it was four and five. But but what I do have, which is from 7 to volume 20, is excellent. Love Inspector. Such a fun detective mystery yokai series. Sandwich in between the two here is in the name of the Mermaid Princess. I have the first three volumes here. I don't know what happened to volume two that's missing from this picture, but hey, trust me, I do have it. <laughs> it's about mermaids, which you know I am an expert on on this channel. A really nice series. I was pleasantly surprised with what I've read so far. In the back, we we got Insomniacs After School. I don't do a lot of high school romance. It's not 100% for me. I'd rather read them as adults, but this one is very nostalgic and sweet and sometimes wholesome as well. I do recommend it. The art I think is phenomenal and I think this is easily one of the best looking romance series out there. That's just my personal take. From Dark Horse, we have the first omnibus edition of Innocent. I really do need to pick up the rest. Looking forward to reading more of that. And from Kodansha, here is the Initial D series. We got the first two Omnis here. Love me some Initial D. Even though I'm not a car guy, I do love Initial D. Similar to how people don't like sports, yet they'll read every single sports manga and truly enjoy it. That's how I am with Initial D and the, the cars and races and the drama and all that stuff. On top, we got Hunter Hunter. Yes, I know it's weird. <laughs> we got volumes 32 to 37 and just one random volume one. Let me tell you real quick what happened here. I finished watching the anime for the first time. The, I believe it was 2011 uh, version from Madhouse and decided, okay, uh, now I'm going to continue the story with the manga. So I picked up where the story leaves off with volume 32 and then I realized oh shoot now I gotta go back and get 30 volumes of manga uh, I'm in no rush this isn't a series that's going out of print anytime soon it's super popular and I've been waiting ever since and then at some point I thought all right let me just start so I grabbed volume one and then my mind thought no 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 what are you doing you you, you said you would wait Gio what what is happening here and I did and now we have the announcement of the omnibus the three and one editions and I am super excited for that. I will be grabbing those and they line up, I think, pretty well. I would need to get volume 31 and would not be double dipping on anything. That's my weird story with Hunter Hunter. Thank you for listening. Next cube, we got Magical Girl Apocalypse. I gotta give a shout out to one of my friends for gifting me this full series. This is not what I typically read, but I was engrossed by it. It's this horror fan service mashup with Bishojo Magical Girls. It kind of worked for me, even though it has some truly appalling characters. I do not recommend it for newbie readers that want to get into like Magical Girl books and stuff. I, I think this should be at the bottom of the list to try uh, with the more popular stuff on top. Kowloon Generic Romance, another phenomenal series. I cannot wait. Every time I get a new volume, I'm super excited to check this series out. Wonderful. Next to it, two more wonderful series. We got Lucifer and the Biscuit Hammer, the Omnibus Editions, two and ones, all five. And on top, we got the first five volumes of Level One, Demon Lord, and One Room Hero. I think this is highly underrated. A pretty fun fantasy series, which has a lot of action and comedic elements as well. Next cube, we got Mysterious Disappearances, the first two volumes. I love Nujima's art, and this is sort of the manga that combines Japanese folklore, urban legends, creepypasta, stuff like that, with a little bit of fan service here and there. Big personalities on this book, and I am super excited that Seven Seas got the license for it. Here we have the first two volumes, so yay me! Next to it was a surprise find at Walmart of all places. They just had for sale Nana, volume one. I really enjoyed 
enjoyed the Nana anime. I've always wanted to check out the manga, so here we go. At some point, whenever I do have space, I would like to finish getting all of Nana and having a complete set of that. Uh, next to it, same story. Natsume's Book of Friends. I only have the first two, which were reprinted. I don't know why we're waiting on reprints for some of the other volumes in this series. Like, there is interest. People want them. It's not happening, and it frustrates the heck out of me. I could go and hunt down the books that are available, but I don't want to do that because I'm not going to be able to read them anytime soon because where are three, four, five, six so on and so forth. No, the, the ones that are available are like 8, 12, 14, 20, stuff like that. I'm not interested in that stress, if you get me. Over at the back, we have My Dress Up Darling, the first 11 volumes. Really fun series. I can get a little controversial in certain clicks on the internet, but I did enjoy the anime, which made me go back and get the manga. Next to it, a clamp classic, one of my favorite isekai, Magic Knight Ray Earth. I remember the games. I remember the anime, and I believe this will be the first time I read all of Ray Earth, so I'm super excited. I did not get the box sets. I think I've told the story before. I'm not a fan of box sets, and uh, this is that same version from the box set, just scaled down, updated translation, and all that fun stuff. And I should point out, this is part one, so we need three more to have the entirety of the series. Next to it, a new one that I'm collecting, Magi Lumiere, Magical Girls Inc. Phenomenal action comedy series mixing the magical girl genre with corporate Japan, kaiju, monsters, all that fun stuff. I do recommend checking it out. At the back, we got some Tromigo Takahashi books, Meizoni Koku, all 10 volumes of, I believe they're called Perfect Editions or whatever they're called. Uh, they're quite good. Meizoni Koku is a classic. Next to it, more Takahashi. We got Mermaid Saga 1 and 2. I reviewed that on this channel if you guys want to check it out. And on top, we got, not Takahashi, Marmalade Boy. Uh, these are the perfect editions from Seven Seas Entertainment. So cool to have this one uh, classic in both mediums of manga and anime, all collected in larger trim size. You remember when I talked about Dark Gathering, uh, like, 20 minutes ago or whenever that was. Well, here's the other Shonen Jump series that I am collecting or I've been collecting. I don't know. One Piece in the three in one format. I don't want the box sets and I don't care for the single volumes. I'm fine with the three in ones. Unfortunately, I'm up to, I don't know the number right now, but the equivalent, as you can see down below on the spines of volume 75, I think I'm missing less than 10 to catch up between like seven to nine uh, three in ones and I'll be caught up, but I'm not caught up with the reading. So I promised myself that I would read all of this material. And once I do, I would resume my collecting of One Piece because I got to balance things out. There's so much stuff coming out, right? Next to it, we got some other random goodies. Past the Monster Meet My Lady has been a fun food manga with romance elements that I enjoy. And behind that, we got Record of Ragnarok, everything that's been released so far, which is not a lot considering the series is longer than 11 volumes. So it's been a little frustrating trying to collect this because you read a volume in like 15 minutes and then you're stuck there, you know, questioning your life as you move on to the next book. I don't want that. So I'd rather get everything in a bundle and, and binge through it. It. So I'm like five volumes behind and stuff like that. Next to it, however, is a gem of an action series, parodying all the cool stuff from Super Sentai, Kaiju, Tokusatsu, and of course the shonen uh, formula of manga writing is Rooster Fighter. Cannot recommend it enough. I love this one so much. Damn, this is a great manga. I love that freaking rooster. Behind it, uh, well, well, uh, yeah, uh, not safe for work for once. This is prison school. I think it is hilarious and people should be a little bit more open-minded and just laugh out loud at the absurdity that happens in here. It does have a lot of fan service though. So heavy, heavy, not safe for work, just in case. So I do have the other volumes. This is just the first nine, uh, releases here. At top, we have Onegai Teacher, which happens to be my second ever manga that I bought. Isn't that wild? The first one, I'll spoil it, is Samurai Deeper Kyo. And then I randomly found Onegai Teacher. Just got really excited. I thought the premise was wacky. You know, this alien teacher and this kid falls in love with her, blah, blah, blah. And I read it, loved it. And then I found out that it has an anime. Watched it, wasn't really the same. And then I found out 
second plot twist that the manga was an adaptation of the anime. So that blew my mind as a novice manga reader. I thought it was the other way around. Long story short, I do prefer the manga because it was the first thing that I read or, or experienced from this franchise. Oshinoko. I got five volumes of it. I stopped collecting it because I realized I enjoy the anime more because of the voice acting and the fantastic coloring on that series. For those reasons, I'm out. I will keep these five volumes, but I'm excited to continue the journey with the anime instead. On the next shelf, we got the rest of Prison School. You thought I was done with the etchiness. No, I'm not. Here is 10 through 14 collecting uh, the rest of Prison School and more guilty pleasures. Yes, I know this is not the best manga, but dang it, is it a fun time? It's silly, it's stupid. I appreciate that the characters are actually adults in college, which makes it a little bit sadder considering what the main protagonist is doing, but whatever. I, I think I'm in it here for the girls. They are fun, cute characters. And that's that's my story. And I'm going to stick with it. Rent a girlfriend. Shout out. <laughs> At the top of this stack, we got Ran and the Grey World. All of that uh, wonderful series, seven volumes. And in front of that, we have Succubus and Hitman. Man, this whole section of the collection is for degenerates only. I do apologize. Uh, this one is like Death Note meets John Wick with heavy, 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 not safe for work fan service. If that interests you, I think you'll enjoy Succubus and Hitman. Next to it, we have Sword of the Demon Hunter Kijin Gentosho, the first four volumes. I think I have volume five somewhere. Really enjoy this one. If you like time travel aspects with feudal Japan and samurai versus oni and all that, you'll be right at home with uh, Kijin Gentosho. Do recommend it. On the next queue, we have probably one of my favorite romantic comedies, I think. Like I mentioned earlier, I'm not big on the high school romance thing, but I really, really enjoyed The Dangers in My Heart. I watched the anime adaptation, loved it, decided to collect the manga, and have been loving the series ever since. This is a phenomenal romantic comedy. Next to it, speaking of romantic comedies, is The 100 Girlfriends. I'm missing the first two volumes because those were part of what was adapted into the first season of the anime. And what I typically do is, oh, I like this show. I'm going to read the manga. I'm going to get the books. So I start collecting past where the anime adapted. And then I, I, I go back and pick up the missing volumes. But for this one, uh, I, let's just say I forgot to grab volume one and two. <laughs> Behind it, we got The Ancient Magus Bride, the first 15 volumes. I don't think I'm too far behind of the current release, but this is a wonderful dark fantasy uh, romantic series. I do recommend checking it out. Next to it, uh, shout out to Yen Press who sent me this copy that is really cool. Uh, the Kept Man of the Princess Knight, Volume 1. I don't know when we're getting Volume 2, but this was really fun. And next to it is also one of my favorite comedies. Tomo-chan is a girl omnibus. This has the first three volumes in one. Hopefully one one day we'll get the others. It was kind of weird that we just had this one release for this series. And I hope people out there start asking more about uh, Tomo-chan being collected in this way. Behind it, we got also one of my favorite isekai of all time. That time I got reincarnated as a slime. That was poorly worded. I apologize. But I do have most of the series here. I don't have any of the spin-offs or the light novels, but I do like this manga version. I watched the anime, loved it, and then I saw that it was based on the light novel. I don't read light novels, so I went ahead and picked up the manga instead and actually prefer it this way. I love the art on the manga compared to the anime. Next cube, we got some more cool stuff. We got The Summer Hikaru Died, the first four volumes, a really suspenseful cosmic horror fun manga. Yeah, it's fun. I said it. Yeah, it's fun. Why not? <laughs> Uh, Toge Oni, we got the first three. I think I'm missing a handful of volumes. I don't know, two or three. I don't, I'm not too sure. Uh, it's all a blur these days. And next to it, I believe this is my one and only series that I have from One Piece books, Tales of the Tendo Family, which has been pretty interesting so far. Looking forward to volume three to continue the story. And next to that, we have This Monster Wants to Eat Me, which is a mermaid manga. As I said before, I am one of the mermaid experts on this channel. I'm actually 
probably the only expert on this channel, but uh, whatever. Behind that, we have more etchiness. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Tales of Wedding Rings. I was pleasantly surprised. I watched the anime, thought it was actually pretty funny how it combines isekai tropes with dark fantasy elements and rom-com shenanigans. And the result, the end result, isn't the best thing out there in the world, but it's it's fun. It, it, it's silly. I, I like the characters and it does have good world building, which surprised the heck out of me and actually motivated me to collect the series. I am a huge fan of Maybe. The art that this duo does is phenomenal. Next to it, the tiger won't eat the dragon yet. Got the first two volumes here. Phenomenal looking series. Artistically, I think this is one of the best looking manga released in 2024. And next to it, from Kodansha, we have Tsugume Project. First five volumes here. I think we're missing two more to finish off the series. A really cool idea. Think like Hell's Paradise meets Suicide Squad from DC in manga form as they're going into a post-apocalyptic ravaged Tokyo with mutated animal creature hybrids. It's, it's crazy, but it's a bloody good time. And behind all of that, we have To Your Eternity, one of my all-time favorite manga. First 20 volumes volumes here. Cannot recommend it enough. One of the best of the genre, in my opinion. Next cube is mostly Makoto Yukimura. We have Vinland Saga, the first 12 hardcovers, the two-in-ones. I don't have the deluxe editions because, again, I have all of these and it's very difficult for me to resell them. I, I There's nobody around that wants them and I don't want to do the hassle of online selling, so I'm stuck with these, I guess. Maybe at some point in the future I'll upgrade. I don't know, but I'm fine owning these. Next to it is Planets. Planets, however you pronounce it. I'll just keep saying Planets. This, I I talked about in a video essay on the channel if you want to check it out. Loved it. One of my favorite, uh, it's not sci-fi, but one of my favorite uh, space, there we go, space manga of all time. Next to it, however, is something completely different because this is mostly in alphabetical order unless this shows up, which is out of order, but Whatever. Uh, the Valiant Must Fall is a interesting series. I believe this is from the same creator that did Gunslinger Girls. The art is really good and it's feudal Japan. It has some supernatural elements and a lot of samurai storytelling. In front of all this, we have Wave Listen To Me. I love this because I work in the radio industry and this is a manga about a girl that works at a radio station. How cool is that? For that reason alone, it holds a special place in my heart. I love the anime adaptation as well. Extremely hilarious. And the manga is just as good, obviously. It's the original. Next to it, however, Three Exorcism Siblings, which is a brand new release from Titan. Super action-packed and deals with a lot of Tengu and violent sword fighting. Next to it, World and Solte. Only two volumes released so far, but this one is pretty good as well. In the next queue, we got Wolfsmund. Remember when this came out and people were super excited? This was off the hype of Westerners discovering Berserk in the late 2010s. And Wolfsmund just happened to be around and it's done by a former assistant that worked on Berserk for Kentaro Miyuda, rest in peace. And I believe this is out of print and a little expensive. I might be mistaken. A lot of people are hoping this gets a reprint at some point. Next it we got Yokohama Kaidashi Kiko which couldn't be any more different and on top we got Yona of the Dawn only four volumes I stopped because I figured I don't have room right now to get 35 more volumes or however long it is of Yona even though it's fantastic I do plan on getting the rest at some point at the front we have Yakuza Reincarnation also one of my favorite isekai right now that's being published and next to it some of the volumes of Zom 100 similar to what happened with the other anime that I watched and enjoy. Same thing happened here with Zom. I uh, picked up where the anime left off and now I'm gonna go back and collect the older volumes. On top of the Kallax shelf, we got Berserk, all 14 volumes of the Deluxe Edition, and 
Sailor Moon Eternal. I am missing the two Sailor V books, but I'll get those eventually. And next to Sailor Moon, we have Blade of the Immortal, the Deluxe Editions. Up front, however, this was a recent move to sort of shift books around so that I could have a little bit more space. I put all the Vagabond, or what I do have of Vagabond, in here. Now, I'm in a dilemma right now because we are getting the new oversized edition, Deluxe Edition hardcover uh, in 2025. It looks phenomenal. I believe it's the same contents as volume one here and I'm close to finishing collecting Vagabond. Do I ignore that? Try and sell these books and get the the uh, hardcover or do I finish the set and be happy that I own these Viz Big editions? I don't know. Let me know in the comment section. What would you do? Next to it is Dragon Ball. I had to do it. Uh, Akira Toriyama, one of the goats and uh, this like, like any other child in the 90s, I grew up with the explosion of anime, which was Sailor Moon, Pokemon, and DBZ. So for a long time, I neglected collecting Dragon Ball. And unfortunately, it took his passing for me to realize that I wanted to own this legendary Shonen Jump series. So I went ahead and picked up the recent printings of the three-in-ones, which are smaller, but that's okay. I don't mind it. And I do like the image that they form. Next to it is the Seven Deadly Sins, the uh, new Omnibus editions, and I... I just forgot to keep going. So I only have the first five here. But if you notice, the, the theme is sort of like behind you have the big oversized books and at the front you have the releases with the banners and the spines uh, in the bottom. Uh, that's sort of my wacky mentality when it comes to displaying manga. In a new plot development for the channel, I and my collection, I went ahead and picked up this small three-tier shelf cube thingamajig and uh, I believe this was from yeah this was a, a Bezos website purchase and the purpose of this small shelf is to just fit single volume manga which I am a fan of and of course it quickly filled up but I love how it looks I'm super happy with it you can see here some of the releases and we're gonna go investigate what's in here we have Akira Toriyama's manga theater hardcover next to it burn the witch from tight kubo we got some beast strength action. Uh, next to it, Break of Dawn, the omnibus from Rumiko Takahashi, Came the Mirror and Other Tales, the Udon release for Darkstalkers Red Earth. Uh, next to it from Kentaro Miura, Gigantomaxia. I used to display it next to Berserk, but it's a different series. Here we have Gold Kingdom and Water Kingdom. Lovely Jose book. Highly recommend reading. From Tatsuki Fujimoto, Look Back. I do need to get Goodbye Eddie. I haven't done so, but I'm happy to have Look Back, which is just a phenomenal one shot. Mermaid Scales and the Town of Sand, you know, because I am the mermaid expert. <laughs> it's a joke, by the way, don't get too upset about that. And next to it, we got Mermaid Prince, which is another fantastic uh, short story collection. At the front, we got Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Mate in color. I was surprised. I thought it was going to be one volume, but then another one showed up. I don't know if they're going to make a third one, but I love Miss Kobayashi, the anime. I'm not 100% on board with the manga, but I love the show and wanted to own something of the manga for my collection and this is the happy medium I guess this is the perfect thing to get <laughs> the selective color chapters this book collects certain chapters from the manga and fully displays them in color which looks really good in my opinion next to it we got nude model and other stories Olympus one more step, come stand by my side. Satoshi Kon's Opus. We got Hayao Miyazaki's Shuna's Journey. Sandland, my favorite non-DBZ Akira Toriyama book. And then from Tatsuki Fujimoto, short story collections. I do need to get Chainsaw Man. I like it, but I don't plan on getting it anytime soon. It's, it's one of those popular things that I can live without, even though I do enjoy reading it. Next to it from Kaori Ozaki, the same mangaka that did Mermaid Prince. Here is The God's Lie. I do need to get the other collections that are out from the creator but super excited to own this one and from satoshi Kon, one of my favorite movie directors of all time rest in peace we got tropic of the sea down below we got some new releases that for the heck of it i decided to place here previously this middle shelf was just for my figures but i took them out because yay books we got the center of the deep sea it's only going to be three volumes friday at the atelier i think it's only four volumes we got orb on the movements of the 
the Earth. We're only missing one omnibus here uh, to collect the entirety of the series, all eight volumes. God bless the mistaken is only going to be four volumes. That's why it's here as well. And I had to do it because I am weird. Do you like big girls? Omnibus thick edition. This is a two in one. Uh, I say I'm weird because I have such a wild collection. I mean, you think about it. I got some wholesome stuff. I got some edgy stuff. I got some fan service. Uh, it's a little bit of everything on the uh, manga geekdom shelf. In the bottom shelf, we have The Night Blooms Behind Castle Walls, a super heavily underrated series, and the manga adaptation of The Tunnel of Summers, The Exit of Goodbyes, Ultramarine. Really lovely series. I made a whole video on it on the channel if you want to check it out. I do have the Death Note all-in-one edition. I was not going to collect Death Note because I do prefer the anime over the manga, but this was a cool gimmick, and sometimes I, I buy into the gimmicks. I buy into the FOBO and grab them. So there you go. <laughs> in the back, we got the Gon box set. This is an Italian release. However, Gon is wordless, so you can pick this up and enjoy it. I love this series so much, and this release is so cool. This is actually one of my favorite sets in my whole entire collection. Next to it, we got the 20th anniversary edition Omnibus of Paradise Kiss, and my one of my few, uh, I believe this is a manhwa, uh, The Kingdom of the Gods, which is an excellent zombie story. And of course, of course, I do have the big box hit for Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind from Hayao Miyazaki. Okay, let's keep going to the final part of the collection. This other shelf, which uh, houses most of my games and the TVs on top and all that stuff. So it's a mixed media of sorts, but it does have four cubes here for manga. And I sort of added specific creators on here, even though it's gotten way out of hand by adding other stuff. In this first cube, as you can see here, we got the old boy hardcovers, which I did not have room anywhere else, so they're in here. And next to it, we got my very small Osamu Tezuka collection. I do need to pick up some more classics. And in the back, we have my incomplete Taiyo Matsumoto collection. As you can see here, Tech on Kinkari, the old edition. I have not grabbed the recent one that came out. We got number five and Sunny hardcovers, as well as the first volume of Tokyo the these days. In the next shelf, let's just start at the back because it's going to get wild, uh, is Naoki Urusawa, one of the goats. We have Monster here, all nine of the perfect editions. And next to it, Asadora, which is his latest release. I believe we have one volume coming up soon, so I'm excited to grab that. In front of that, we have Pluto, which is probably in my top three manga of all time. I love it that much. Phenomenal series. Next to it, I'm not going to pronounce this because I always get it wrong and I sound like a fool reading it, but it is uh, one of the classic series, action series from uh, Hiroaki Samura. Same creator as Blade of the Immortal and Wave Listen to Me. Next to it, we have just one omnibus of Tokyo Revengers. I decided not to get the series, but I did want to own at least one volume of it, so I picked up the first omnibus. And we got Captain Momo, which is uh, super not safe for work, but it's actually a very wholesome slice of life uh, sci-fi series, if you can believe it. Oh boy. Uh, yeah, um, I do like monster creatures. I'm trying to evade saying monster girls, but you catch my drift. Uh, interspecies reviewers. All right. <laughs> All eight volumes along with the anthology. Nothing to see here, folks. Next to it, one of the best sci-fi manga of all time, in my honest opinion, Spirit Circle. In the next cube is mostly dedicated to Ino Asano as well as Shuzo Oshimi. So for Shuzo Oshimi, we have the Flowers of Evil as well as Happiness, one of my favorite vampire manga. We got random series, Blade of the Moon Princess, which I could not fit anywhere else, so it's in here, and a couple volumes of A Terrified Teacher at Ghoul School, which sort of bleeds into my yokai collection, but we'll talk about that in a few minutes. In front of that, we got Ino Asano stuff, Goodnight Poon Poon, all seven volumes, A Girl on the Shore, Nijigahara Holograph, Dead Dead Demons, Dead Dead Destruction, and I know I'm missing the short story collections and Solonin. At some point, I would like to grab those to put on this shelf. And around this uh, section, we have Witch of Thistle Castle, all four volumes, Whoever Steals This Book, which is a really fun series from Yen Press, and the first volume here of Go 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 Ghost. The final cube here 
has some of my yokai and a lot of Junji Ito. As you can see here, we got Cat-Eyed Boy from Kazuo Umez, all two volumes of that, and The Goat, one of my all-time favorite comic creators, Shigeru Mizuki. We got Nononba, we got uh, Toromonogatari, we got Gegege no Kitaro, and we actually have some of the Japanese encyclopedia yokai books from Mizuki. My hope is to have enough space where I can grab everything that's out from Shigeru Mizuki, because I do want to grab the Showa era war books. I want to grab the uh, other yokai art books and stuff like that. So that is a goal of mine for 2025. Seriously, this is some of the best manga around in my honest opinion. And I'm so happy to own some of Gekage no Kitaro, which is such a monumental release. And I am a little disappointed that we don't have everything collected, just these handpicked stories in nine books. In the back, are my Junji Ito books. As you can see here, they are displayed in the order I got them. So that's why the story collections are next to each other. And of course, the third row at the back, uh, more Ito. And uh, yeah, Uzumaki was the first book that I got from Ito and it's still the best material that I've read from the creator. On top, we got some yokai stuff. We got Ayashimon from Shonen Jump and the Great Yokai War. But we're not done because we have the famous closet where I keep random books. <laughs> As you can see here, we have Samurai Deeper Kyo, we have My Hero Academia, Demon Slayer, stuff like that that's already collected and I'm not gonna reread anytime soon, so I just put them on there. And next to it is my uh, Pokemon manga collection, which is up to date, up with uh, Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. So there it is, folks. That is the manga collection for 2024. I am out of room. I made some room, but, it, you know, it's all, I'm, I'm always playing Tetris when it comes to collecting and displaying. So hopefully next year it's going to look a little bit different. Fingers crossed. <laughs> So that is going to be it. It's a long video. I do apologize. Thank you all so much for checking this video out. If you liked it, hit the like button. Let me know in the comment section uh, which books you want me to talk about because I get confused in the day-to-day -day life and the hecticness of work and all that stuff. I forget that I have some gems out here that I could talk about on the channel. So if you're interested in something, let me know and I will try to work out a video about that series. So that is going to be it for now. Thank you once again for liking, commenting, subscribing, and being a part of Manga Geekdom. I truly do appreciate it. Stay safe, everybody. God bless. I will catch all of you on our next video.